Hey guys, great. Thank you. Hi, Teresa. Right now. Morning, Mike. What's that, Joe? I, just want, I was hoping these two would just get a debate going if you could wait a couple minutes. Uh -huh. What are they debating? What aren't they debating? You, you really we want to know? And oh, we're we're, we're, we're debating the, uh, the third and one. He I did, did a video, video on to how it could have worked, and I said you could do a video on any play that could have worked. Yeah, you're exactly <laughs> right. You both are exactly right, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> Mike, you got so much production out of your wide your rookies on the in, in the mm -hmm. passing game this last week. How much more do you need to start getting out of uh, some of your veterans like Robert and, and Austin Hooper and, and and doing more to get, maybe get Traylon involved as well? Well, I think we just need production from from everybody. That's that's the key. It doesn't have to do anything with with age or experience. It's just making sure that. Um, you know that we're we're all focused on the details that that there were everybody's working to get open whether it's man or zone being where they're supposed to be, and, and again the quarterback has to make great decisions, um, be smart with the ball, be decisive. We don't necessarily look at okay we got to get this guy going. I mean there, we're going to obviously have some things that that are for guys, but you know we just have to make sure that everybody's in the right spot and the quarterback makes a decision. Like the. Uh... I guess the, the number of first down runs for Derek, I mean, a lot of people are saying too predictable. But on the other hand, is it only tr too predictable if you don't gain enough yardage? If they don't that's, that's pretty much your job and my job. That's what it go. That's what happens around, you know, the, the, the second guessing. I mean, we've had a lot of successful, you know, first down runs. We want to have a lot of successful first down runs and, and passes on Monday. And so, you know, that's, um, that, that's the battle that, that everybody wages. You know, especially, you know, our focus is on, on Buffalo and, and going up there and making sure that we have a plan that whatever we do on first down, um, the players understand, that they believe in, and that they uh, have an opportunity to execute it. How big a challenge is slowing down their pass rush? And what they do to generate so much pressure on Thursday? Um, you know, they, they, they won. You know, they didn't send a whole lot of pressure. Um, you know, just give them a lot of credit for, for what they do. Uh, they they don't do a whole lot. I mean, what they do is be fundamental, be sound. Um, they play hard. They're they're very good fundamentally, very good tacklers defensively, and you know those guys were able to to roll guys through. You know they they played a bunch of defensive linemen. Um, you know who all had you know, some sort of impact in the game, whether that was Vaughn on the outside, Phillips inside, um, Oliver, um, Daquan, you know Epinesa. You know, they just keep rolling guys in at you. There's this five years in a row now you've played them. Is there almost a division-like familiarity with these well, guys? Well, there's at this a familiarity. Point? You know, got a lot of respect for for Sean and the program uh, that they have and the, and the football team they have. It's going to be a huge challenge going on the road, and uh, we're looking forward to it. We're excited. In that one game that you've gotten to see their rushing attack with Saffold, uh, what are your thoughts on like? Does it seem different at all with with him in there for them? Well, I mean, I think that there's some, um, you know, some carryover from what they did last year. I think some change, uh, things have changed uh, as it relates to maybe, you know, the scheme. You know, obviously Josh is a huge part of what they do running the football. But, you know, Singletary and Moss can can change, uh, you know, pace. And, 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 you know, they've done a nice job. You know, Gillum has done a nice job when they put him in there blocking. Uh, they created some some X-play runs out of that, that 21 personnel package. You talked on Monday about a, a guy's, uh, we were talking about Zach specifically, a decision as to how to get to the ball carrier over, under, or through. How much thinking goes on in, in the moment, or is there a little bit of film study in terms of uh, how I might do this given the moment, and how much just happens? Well, I think instincts are a large part of uh, football, life, you know, being able to understand you know what what situation that everybody's in. You know we you know, we charge these guys with making decisions, whether that's uh, blocking somebody or, or running a certain route. You know so as a linebacker, you're going to have to make a decision, a pretty quick decision, and find out where the football is or what the blocking scheme is. Mike, the, the Bills have different corners on, on the outside than when you guys met them last year. I guess <laughs> just through one game, maybe what what did you see from from the guys they have? Well, I think they're long, athletic. Um, I think they challenged. Um, 
you know, and I think they understand what their scheme is, a very, very, very good scheme. Like I said, the, the seven pass plays, I guess, of 20-plus yards, uh, indication, you know, of those explosive-type plays that, that you guys were hoping to get more of uh, this season? You know, we're going to need a lot of them on Monday. I think that's something that, you know, we'll have to continue to, to work on and, and being able to stay balanced. And, you know, when, when we throw it and there, there's timing, then you can have some, some opportunities for run after the catch. And there's other opportunities out there that we're going to have to try to take advantage of. We talked the other day about Swain being the best blocking tight end. How is that tight end tackle relationship? How, how important is that both in the run blocking and also in pass pro? Well, I think anytime you're in combination with somebody up front, um, whether that be a guard or tackle, center guard, tackle, tight end, or even the tight ends uh, together, that you know we we hope that there is a, a good uh, understanding of who you're working with and the communication that goes into it. You know whether a guy you know spikes inside or or loops outside, um, how that two players have to work in, in unison to get to to a player on the football or one that's off the football working to a, a second level player. So, you know, hopefully we can continue to work those combinations. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's as much in, in the pass game uh, as it would be in the run game. With the, Go with the personnel rotation, as far as like maybe Henry for Hilliard or Westbrook or Kenny for Hollister or whatever, how do you go about regulating that and just making sure that that is in line with the play calls that, that, you're, that you're making? Um, you know, sometimes you want certain guys in there for specific plays. Sometimes that always doesn't always happen. Uh, sometimes there's injuries and, uh, you know, then other, you know, maybe at receiver, there, there's, um, there's a rotation, just trying to keep guys fresh and roll. And then, you know, as it relates to Derek, you know, we just have to, you know, make sure that, you know, he, he's getting his opportunities, but then, you know, make sure that, you know, there's guys in there that can that can go in there and help us when, when called upon. That rotation, that is decided by, well, not decided, but facilitated by Which the Which one are you talking coaches? about here specifically? What, what, I'm, I'm talking about the receivers, Henry for Hilliard. Uh, Derek, as Derek's going to play a bunch. I mean, we've made a major commitment to Derek Henry. Right, understood, but... As far as the rotation is concerned, that's something that's up to Tony Dews for the receivers. Is that up to Rob Moore? How does that? No, I mean it, we're making sure that that guys are are playing and that they all have a role in the game. And then, you know, sometimes the play call would predicate, you know, hey, let's get these guys in here or let get them at that position. Um, you know, I think that there's a lot of moving parts. Kid on uh, Monday, just about trailing, you'd like to see him make guys miss instead of run over them sometimes. I mean, I, is there a fine line there? You want the guy to show some toughness, but realize maybe there's more available on a play if he makes a move. You think he's capable of doing that? Oh, I, I know that he's capable of doing that. We just, you know, I just, you know, it, it was good to see him get off to a good start, and uh, and hopefully he can build on it and and use his skill set and, and his God-given ability. Uh, he's working hard to improve. Where is he in terms of knowing everything, Mike? Everything? I mean, I mean, I don't think everybody besides you knows everything. Um, but he's working hard. Joe liked that one. Um, it was a layup, Joe. Um, there, there's a lot. You know, I mean, just there, there's a lot with, with offensive terminology and playing X or – F or Z or whatever the position may be. And I, I know that he's studying hard. I just look at, you know, a guy like Josh Gordon just kind of coming in and, and trying to, to learn just our system and, and figure it out. And these guys work hard. And so, you know, I think Traylon, again, not without mistake or, you know, you know, maybe he lined up in a wrong split or somewhere. But, you know, I think he's, you know, he's working hard to – to get a complete grasp of everything that we're doing. What's the emotional <laughs> balance between losing a guy like Anini, who you know, who could potentially help you, but feeling good about the fact that he's getting an opportunity to play? Yeah, I would, you know, always happy for for these guys. That's what we always tell them uh, when John and I talk to them at the end of training camp. Is that you know, we want to keep working with you, the, the the ones that we have to release and then put on the that we'd like to put on the practice squad. 
um, hope that you're back for us, but I know that you want to realize that that opportunity and dream of, of being on a, a 53-man roster. Um, you know, so wish David the best of luck. Just considering him, like uh, to adding him to the 53, did you and John talk about adding him maybe? Um, you know, I mean, without getting into a whole lot of detail, I don't know if we really had an opportunity to, to, to even do that. In Sunday's game, Phillips was able to keep drives alive, getting a couple of defensive holding penalties called. Is there a particular skill or craft to being able to draw penalties from the defense, whether it's a PI or a defensive hold? Well, I think as you look around the league, sometimes, um, you know, guys that, that are quicker or maybe set up a, a move, stem a guy, you know, and then maybe there's some level of, of throwing your hands up. I mean, I think that, you know, we talk about there's opportunities for receivers to come back to the football and, and try to get some of those, you know, penalties or obviously make the play and try to catch the football. But um, I, usually just some, some quick guys that are able to get guys off balance. Um, you know, and then they, they grab and restrict. Can you talk a little bit about that Dalvin Ron though? But, you know, in terms of him getting outside of the pocket, he can use his legs, obviously. But having a guy like David Long Jr. with the speed he has to be able to get there and wrap him up, like how important is that going to be just when he does move out of the pocket? Well, everybody, you know, as everybody um, plays a role in that, it's, it's, um, it's a fine line between being able to rush him, um, but then also, you know, try to, corral him at places where, where he can't hurt you. Um, you know, he's got great pump fake, um, great stiff arm, you know, and then the ability and the arm talent to, to throw the ball um, wherever he wants it on the move. So, you know, we'll have to have a good plan. We'll start to, you know, work that today, which, which obviously is going to be a huge part of what we're doing. Um, and, and then obviously just trying to make sure that the guys are, are ready and expect some of the stuff that he's going to try to do. Coach, you guys have won eight of your last ten Monday Night Football games. Why do you think you've had success like that during primetime games? Um, I don't even know. I don't know how many, you know, we've been a part of here in the last four years. But, you know, we really just try to take each week, um, you know, as its own week and focus on what it's going to take to win this week and the preparation that goes into it. Um, it's going to be a great environment. We're excited to go up there. But that that's a you know a ways away. You know we this is our first really practice. This is like a Wednesday for us, so you know we're going to have to get started, and the crowd noise is going to be a factor, and we'll have to start working that operation and what we're going to do there. Yeah, I think that's going to be interesting with a lot of the rookies and a lot of the rookies playing, just kind of preparing them for that type of atmosphere. A lot of them probably haven't seen that that level. Yeah, I think that you know, I, you know that's why we practice, and we'll get ready for it, and we'll, we'll make sure that they're prepared. Ryan, I guess in the past, what is what has kind of allowed this team to get up for games like this after maybe taking a bad L? Um, you know, you got to get yourself ready to go each and every week. You know, no matter what happened the week before, uh, you come in, you put a great week of work in, and then get yourself ready to go. So I don't think this week's any different. Um, we're able to look at the tape, make the corrections from last week, and uh, attitude's been good. Uh, we've got a great start today, just in our in our early walkthrough. And I look forward to uh, carrying that momentum throughout this week. So when you look back at it, did you, were there some opportunities, more opportunities for Austin to be involved? And I guess how important do you think it is moving forward that he is more involved? Yeah, no doubt Austin is uh, going to be a playmaker for us throughout the year. Um, you know, just kind of worked out where you know during that game there weren't a, a whole lot of opportunities for for him. Um, but you know, we know he's going to have to make a bunch of plays for us. You know, moving forward throughout this year. So I have a ton of confidence in Austin, and, and we've shown that throughout training camp. So, you know, when those opportunities arise, we'll be able to hit them. Well, our games, I guess, in Buffalo, anything you, unique about playing there and what kind of challenge you think you faced there from just a noise, you know, rowdiness of the crowd perspective? Yeah, it's a rowdy crowd, man. It's a, it's a football atmosphere. You know, when you think about just going into a hostile environment, you know, fans are loud. They're, uh, they're into the game. Uh, no matter what's happening in the game, they're going to be loud. They're they're riled up in the uh, in the parking lot pregame, you know. So um, definitely a great football atmosphere and and challenge you offensively. You know you have to go in there, be able to communicate in a loud environment, 
whether it be from, from myself to the guys in the huddle, at the line of scrimmage, whatever the case may be, you know, we have to be clean in our communication to make sure we're all on the same page. This team seems to like the underdog, us against the world mentality. Why do you think that is? I mean, at the end of the day, what matters is, is the guys in the locker room and, and the coaching staff, you know, who, who prepares us. So uh, no matter what's going on on the outside, what you know, people are saying about us, it doesn't really matter. Whether it's good or bad, you know, we have to be able to, to believe in each other and, um, and you know, have that synergy of, of believing in each other and, and doing our job together in order to go out and play well. And sometimes, for whatever reason, you know, that, that us against the world mentality increases that. And then with Robert Woods, I think it was two targets on, on Sunday, just like Austin Hooper, you know, how can you get him the football a little bit more as well? Yeah, no doubt. You know, Robert's going to make plays. Like I said, after the game, you know, kind of every game is going to be a little bit different. You know, some sometimes, you know, Robert's going to get more targets than the other guy. Sometimes it's going to be Traylon. Sometimes it's going to be Hoop. Sometimes it's going to be Kyle. Uh, it's going to vary week to week. But uh, we have a lot of confidence in our guys and, and know, uh, you know, we're able to spread the ball around and try to find whoever's open. And with Derrick Henry's success running the football, obviously, you know, the focus is going to be on stopping him. And talking to some of the receivers, you know, that one-on-one -on -one covers on the outside, they take that personally. For you, you know, when you see that box stack, is that something that you take personally as well? Oh, well, it's exciting. You know, you, you'll see, you know, a bunch of guys down around the line of scrimmage that gives you opportunities outside. And, um, you know, I think we were able to do a little bit of that last week, take advantage of it. So have to be able to, uh, to build on that and expand on it. Ryan, it says, Ryan at least, that, that Traylon could be a deep threat. I know you guys didn't connect on the deep shots, but did you get a sense that he might be able to at least be a threat in, in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I, I learned that in, in practice. You know, he was able to, to run by guys in practice several times throughout training camp. So, um, you know, I have a ton of confidence in, in Traylon being able to make those plays down the field for me. Ryan, is there a distinct difference in this Bills defense when, when you look at film, or is it kind of really the same? Uh, structurally, it's the same, you know, and a lot of the same faces. You know, they added Vaughn uh, up front. Jordan Phillips is back from a little hiatus. Um, but two really, really good players who obviously make their defense better. But uh, you just look top to bottom, their safeties, their backers, their front. They're a really sound football team. Um, they don't do a crazy amount of exotic stuff, you know, like maybe the Giants did. But they're very sound. They play extremely hard. Uh, they're good tacklers. They're not going to try to give you anything. You know, they're going to make you try to earn everything that, uh, that you get out there. And they're a really good, really good defense. Solid. Seven 20-plus yard pass plays for you, the most of any team in the NFL in week one. What kind of went right just trying to push the ball downfield, getting those chunk plays through the air for you? I think it really came down to winning our one-on-ones. You know, we had opportunities, um, a couple of them in, in drop back, but a couple of them in play action where, you know, guys were one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and, and we were able to take advantage of the space that was created um, by playing one-on-one -on -one coverage. Ryan, they obviously used to be a uh, division rival for you, but now that you've come to Tennessee, you know they've played each other now. This will be the fifth straight year. How much does it feel like a rivalry still for you, or is there just so much familiarity? How does it feel when you guys are preparing for the uh, Bills? We have a lot of respect for them. It's, it's a really good team through and through. Um, like you said, there's a lot of familiarity going against them for the my fourth year in a row here uh, in Tennessee, fifth year overall. So. Um, a lot of carryover with the defense, with the guys on defense, with our guys on offense. So we, we know each other well. Both teams know each other well. It comes down to, to execution and making plays. We remember, about a, we remember about, I guess, a young Von Miller when you guys were in school at Texas A&M. And would, would you prefer to see him in the offseason rather than showing <laughs> up on you know, game day? Uh, I don't mind seeing him. But I just don't want him within my bubble, you know what I mean, uh, which is tough to do. He's, he's a heck of a football player. He was back at A&M when I was able to uh, call him a teammate. Made a bunch of plays for us in Aguiland, and I think he's only improved upon that, you know, throughout his time in the NFL. You know, he's he's fast, he's he's slippery, he's got power, you know. So he, he has every tool that you look for in an edge rusher, and you know, he's been dominant over the course of his career. When you get off to a start like this with your rookie wide receivers Phillips and Burks, how encouraging is that to see guys that young be that productive in that first game, and how much growth they can probably have from here on out? Yeah, no doubt. It's it's encouraging to see the carryover from what we've seen in practice. You know, saw the, both of those guys make plays for me in practice, and then saw it translate over to to week one. So um, they settled in nicely. They made the plays that, that we want them to make. Obviously, there's a there's a little bit of, of room to grow as there is with with everyone. But excited to see 
the steps those guys took and, and making plays for us when it counted on uh, on last Sunday. Kyle was able to keep a couple drives alive Sunday with drawing defensive holding penalties. Do, do some receivers just seem to have a knack for being able to draw penalties, whether it's a PI or a defensive hold, that sort of thing? Well, Kyle's pretty quick and, and pretty fast. So, um, you know, I think a lot of times whenever you have a guy like Kyle and he makes the, the DB miss, then they, try, they panic and they try to do everything they can to, to not lose, lose the rep. And, you know, sometimes that includes holding. So, um, you know, Kyle's done a great job, like I said, throughout training camp of, of beating one-on-one -on -one coverage. And, you know, he did that uh, on Sunday. You know, I think um, Buffalo has a, has a good secondary. Um, their nickel is, is a veteran player. He's played a lot of football and uh, is a good cover guy. So, you know, it's going to be a challenge for us to, uh, to take advantage of that matchup. For you, as far as the freedom to check at the line, right, you get a, the call to you as a running play. You get there, the numbers aren't in your favor. How much freedom do you have to check out of that and, and get your guys in, in a better position for a better play? Yeah, there's always some freedom there. I think kind of depends on situation and, and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, you know, situation in the game, situation um, down and distance wise. But, you know, there's always some freedom there. And um, at certain times, definitely try to take advantage of those situations. You guys go flat the, the way you did in, in the second half. What do you try to do be, beyond making a play? Are, are you saying stuff on the sideline? Are you saying stuff in the huddle to try to? Give an injection that boosts you back to life. What's what's the general reaction to those times? I think it depends on on the game. Depends on the situation. You know, last Sunday my encouragement was just, you know, make the plays that are there. You know, we had some opportunities early in that second half, um, and we just didn't make the plays that, that were there. Um, whether it was a, a block, a throw, a catch, whatever the case may be, um, you can't miss those opportunities and expect to sustain drives and, and get points. So, um, I think that's going to be. Sounds cliche and, and obvious, but that's that's kind of my feeling on on the sideline was, you know, we don't got to try to do anything special. Just make the plays when when the opportunity arises, and we'll be in good shape. Ryan, you guys have, during your time here have done a pretty good job overcoming adversity and rebounding from losses. Is there a is there a confidence that can be taken year to year when you kind of have a track record of, of doing that? When you, you know, after you lose your first one and now playing a team as good as Buffalo. I don't know if, if last year or years before matter, but I know that our culture matters and, and what we believe in in this, this building matters. So I think that's what it comes down to more than anything is believing in each other and, and turning the page, whether last week was a win or, or a loss, being able to, to rally as a locker room and come out and, and get ready to go win another football game next Monday in this case. Added level of excitement preparing for a primetime game for Monday Night Football? Yeah, it's always fun. You know, you want to take advantage of those opportunities. They don't come around a whole lot. You know, it's not like every week you get to play on a, in a night game. So uh, the night game is always a little bit of extra energy in the air and a, and a little more excitement to go with it. So look forward to it and, and try to take advantage of them. Thank you. Thank you.